Hello all, CB Baseball Card Collector coming at you, and I'm going to, I guess, start again up with my TTMs, autographs through the mail. It's been a while since I posted one, but I have one that I'm going to thank uh, my buddy uh, Matt's rule over there. So I have this from Al Chambers. Now, let me give you a little background on him. You can see him here. He was a first round pick, 1979 of the Seattle Mariners. And then he ended up his career here with the um, Columbus uh, team and the Astros organization. So Al uh, played um, from 83 to 85, parts of three seasons. He was a number one pick in 1979. He was um, drafted the same year in the same draft. The Toronto Blue Jays drafted Jay Schroeder, who became the quarterback later on. Also in that first round, we have Tim Leary. Uh, Andy Van Slyke, we all know him as a Pirate and Cardinal, Steve Bouchelle, Brad Comiskey, Tim Wallach, Rick Leach, and Jerry Don Gleaton, another TTM Hall of Famer. They'd all go on to have long careers. Um, now, in that draft, the year before, Bob Horner was 1978 draft pick. Al was the 1979, and the following year, 1980, was Daryl Strawberry, who was the number one pick. So, in long story short, um, Mr. Chambers um, obliged me uh, by sending me some autographs that I asked, and I graciously thank him for doing that. Uh, his career uh, didn't really take off as hope as he had hoped. Uh, this is coming from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, I think where Hershey's at, Hershey Chocolate. He had two home runs, uh, 11 runs batted in his career, and he batted 208 for a total of about 50-something games. Um, and reading a little bit about Mr. Um, Chambers here, um, I'll just read you the quotes that I have. Uh, he, This is back in 2004. He works the afternoon shift from 2 to 10 at Hershey's Food, his hometown of Harrisburg, where he mixes the ingredients for chocolate syrup and wonders what might have been. Uh, 41 years ago in June, that's when he was drafted, the, the Mariners made him his first... His first, dra uh, first round pick, um, they drafted him straight out of high school. They thought he'd be the next Jim Rice. Uh, the scout who uh, drafted him, uh, Bill Kern, said, uh, Chambers has the most power of any free agent I've ever seen. In a few years, people will just pay just to watch this guy take batting practice. That wasn't to be. I mean, there was a great guy. It just didn't happen. Chambers signed a letter of intent to play at uh, Arizona State football, um, but he changed his mind when the Mariners gave him an $85,000 signing bonus, uh, and that changed his mind. Back then, I think the league minimum, I researched this, was 80, about $30,000, $35,000, I think, was the league minimum. So $85,000 is not bad. Um, like I said, he played about 57 games, 120 at-bats, 208, 209 batting average, 208 batting average, beg your pardon. Uh, he called up um, in 1983, actually July of 83. On his first game, and I'm going to read you what it says here from the actual Los Angeles Times. It says, Al Chambers called up earlier in the day from Salt Lake in the Pacific Coast League, made an auspicious debut for the Mariners, driving in four runs with a pair of bases-loaded singles. So that was a great... Great start to a career. Um, what else can I tell you about Mr. Chambers? In this article I read, he was released in the spring of 86 uh, when camp broke. He was up for a position with again, for the DH against Ken Phelps. They went with Ken Phelps. He kind of um, you know managed to travel around the minor leagues, ended up here in 87 and 88. He uh, played for three Mexican teams in Mexico. He was with the Sultanes de Monterrey, Releros de Aguascalientes, and the Tigres Capitalinos. I think those are the Mexicans, Mexico City Tigers. I don't think there's a team there in Mexico City except the those Diablo Rojos is the current team that's been there for a while. Anyhow, his best season in the minor leagues was the year he had 20 in homers. Uh, for Lynn in 81, he had 20 homers. His best batting average is a couple, actually. San Jose, 1980, he batted 300. 
and then in 1983 in Salt Lake, he batted 331. So he kept going up and down. He had 75 RBIs as well. He did. Um, he did get. Um, he did steal a pair of bases in the major leagues. He stole two two bases. And that's uh, the extent of his career on the stolen bases. 11 RBIs. He had 25 hits, 15 runs, four doubles, no triples. And he walked 21 times, struck out 34 times. Alrighty. Well, um, one thing that he had that, that caught my attention back in 1995 when the strike hit, he was actually in camp with the White Sox in 95 as a replacement player. And the GM told him, I believe it might, I don't know who the GM was at that time, but I uh, asked him about that. And I'll get back to that later. So this is what Al, Al, Mr. Chambers has been saying. He got tired of hearing what happened to the number one pick, Al Chambers. Well, number one pick, Al Chambers, didn't get an opportunity. So his, in his defense, he, he says he didn't get a chance to really excel. Anyhow, um, he coached uh, Harrisburg High School for several years, active in clinics and youth baseball. Um, there was a time he left the game, you know, a little hard feelings about that. And he still has hard feelings about this, and this is 41 years later. Uh, well, it really, quote, what it really came down to, he said, is I got drafted by the wrong organization. He says, getting an opportunity at the major league level because I never did, I did everything asked of me in the minors, but when it came, when it came time to come up and make money, they started toying with me. So he got called up in July 22nd when Al Cowens got on the disabled list. And as I read from the LA Times, he had that great debut. Um, he had four runs. He claimed that the veterans on the team didn't take him under their wing. It was a tough situation for me. I talked to other rookies in the league who told me the veterans showed them the rope, but that never happened in Seattle. Long story short, he had a soldier, a shoulder injury, I beg your pardon, and he then, you know, he got buried deep in the Cubs organization, ended up with Houston, and then in 88 in Mexico City. And this is what the GM told him. When he went to replacement ball in 95, the GM said, I was looking at your stats. What happened? Why didn't you get a chance? I said, I ask myself that question every day, he says. In short, on his interview that he gave the uh, Seattle Times, he said, if I ever made it to the majors and had been a veteran player, he said, all the rookies that came up, I would have helped them, even if they were trying to take my spot. Well, long story short, we're here for the TTM. Sorry for the long intro. I just thought he was a unique player, so I sent him a couple cards, and I got it yesterday, so here we go. There's number 23, Al Chambers. Number one draft pick. Put him back there. I think I have another one as well. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. I hope you enjoy this video when I post it. I'm going to post it today. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. And uh, sorry for making this one of the longer videos, but I think this man deserves a little bit more credit than he got. Shoot, I never got to bat in the major leagues. At least he got a couple years and a bunch of cups of coffee. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. And CB Baseball Card Collector signing off. Thank you for the great TTM, Mr. Chambers.